I decided to go for a mountain bike ride and it was very funny. I love quiet and lonely places a lot. I checked my bike and I was carrying a pump, a spare tire and all kinds of tools just like every time I am out for a ride. I was in the middle of nowhere when both of my shoes fall apart. At least the weather was sunny. The city is far away from me. I used some rope to tie the other outsole to the shoe and I took some beautiful photos. I will never forget that day. The moral of the story is that if you are not prepared for the journey, you may not be able to reach your final destination. If you just have bought your pass-up knitting machine, this video is the place to start. There are a few things you need to know before you can start working on the machine. I will leave links to all of the videos in the description so you can find them easily. If you haven't assembled your machine, you have to start by watching these videos. By watching them you will learn how to set up the stand and install the color changer. After you put everything together, make sure the machine is clean and lubricated. The worst thing you can do as a beginner is to dismantle the machine in order to clean it. There is nothing to clean under the plastic parts on the beds, you only need to clean the needles and pushers channels. If you have a very dirty machine, remove all needles and pushers, then carefully put it upside down. You see foam electronic cleaner and a paintbrush to clean the channels. It will make a mess, but that's the best way to clean the machine. After the cleaning is done, watch this video to learn the basics of the machine. It will help you to process the first pages of the pass-up manual. By the way, don't underestimate the pass-up manual. There are some ideas to knit and test the machine. Everything is given step by step so you will be able to get a better understanding of how the machine works. I know it may be a bit overwhelming in the beginning, but take your time to go through these test pieces. After this is done, make sure to choose a suitable yarn for knitting. These machines work with fine yarn, I advise you to use acrylic yarn for your first projects. A very important step is to rewind your yarn into cakes. If you're using a bow or a skein, you may have various issues during knitting. After the yarn is prepared, you have to thread the machine. Your machine must be threaded correctly to prevent any issues while knitting. Before you start knitting a project, you need to make a cast on and knit a test swatch to find the right stitch size setting for your yarn. You have to choose a cast on depending on the project you want to knit. The most used cast-on methods for double bed knitting are the racking cast-on and the tubular cast-on. You can use the racking cast-on for stretchy fabrics or when knitting your test swatches because it is very easy to make. If you want to knit a single bed fabric, you also have to make a cast-on before you start knitting. These are the cast-on methods you have to know as a beginner. Don't push yourself to learn them right away, but make sure to try to make them in your free time. After you make the cast on, you have to continue knitting according to the instructions of your garment. For your test piece, I will advise you to start with a racking cast on with the stitch size about 2 clicks lower than for the main knitting. The lock must pass freely while making the cast on. After you make the cast on, knit several rows with different stitch size settings to find the sweet spot where the lock is moving freely and the knit is not too tight or too loose. I have explained how to knit your first test piece in this video. When you find the right stitch size, you can knit another test swatch and use it to measure the rows and the stitches. Don't forget that the test swatch must be knitted using the same stitch style as for the garment. For example, you can watch this video where I am making a test swatch for knitting a pair of tights. 
After you are done with knitting your project, you have to knit several rows with waste yarn or make a cast off to remove the knitting from the machine. If you skip this step, you will have live stitches that will start to unravel immediately after removing the knitting from the machine. You can watch this video to see how to make the cast off. After you learn how to make the cast off, you may try learning how to use the transferring clocks. Then you may want to knit your first project. If you have an urgent need to make a garment, you may try to knit a poncho. The one on the left is a double bed knit and the one on the right is a single bed knit. After you make the poncho, you can start learning how to knit short rows. First, make sure you know how the pushers work by watching this video. Then for your first project, I will suggest knitting one of these flowers to see the pushers in action. The flowers are easy to make, won't waste much yarn and you may add them to your future projects. After you knit the flower, I suggest you try knitting this doily. It can also be done in 20 minutes or so. If you want to prevent small holes from forming, watch this video, you will learn how to wind the yarn around the needles when knitting short rows. The yarn will connect both stitches and the holes will be gone. If you don't know how to sew the doily, you can watch my Kitchener Stitch tutorial. The Kitchener Stitch makes an invisible seam on both sides of the fabric. Then you may knit these small baby slippers and you are ready for knitting a sock. Knit these slippers first, they are ready to wear as soon as you take them from the machine, no hand manipulations are needed. Now you can see some more easy projects that you may want to make. You can knit this fisherman's rib headband in 30 minutes. Here is an idea for a fisherman's rib scarf that is perfect for beginners. The classic ribbed hat is also easy to knit, but you have to know how to sew it using the mattress stitch in the end. This simple winter hat is knitted in one piece, you don't need to sew it, it is ready to wear after you take it from the machine. And the last thing I will suggest making is this seamless reversible hat, it's more complex than the previous one, but it's suitable for beginners. After you knit some of these easy projects, you may want to introduce yourself to the deco device. You may try to make one of my custom punch cards and use it to make some doilies. I guarantee you that it is fun to watch how the machine does everything for you. If you are a beginner, my biggest advice to you is to need small projects at first until you get used to the machine. Each successfully finished project will give you the motivation for knitting more things. Don't forget to check my playlist with short pass-up tips, I bet you will find something helpful for your knitting journey there. Last but not least, I will leave a link for a playlist with several short clips where I have collected some of the bits and pieces of the pass-up history. So that's all you need to know as a beginner, I may add more things to the list in the description as the time goes on. I wish you have a lot of fun with your pass-up, have a nice day and see you in my next video!